So we've been talking today about why we work. And I work because I want to do good. I spend my life and I spend every day trying to make a positive impact in the work that I do. And I think when we really think about what we all do, why we all work, it's really because we also are trying to make a positive impact in this world. I don't think anybody works 20, 40, 60, 80 hours a week trying to make a negative impact in the world. I think that's really what we're all doing while we're all here, while we all work. But it's not enough to think about why we work. We have to think about how we're doing it. How are we actually achieving the goal we're setting forth? How are you achieving the reason why you work? Now, if you're not doing work, if you're not doing this work in a sustainable way, you're never going to achieve the reason why you're working in the first place. So if on my work, if your work is not sustainable, we're not going to do good. We're not going to make a positive impact. So let's talk more about this idea of working sustainably. So working sustainably means that something can be continued and passed on after you're done. But there's some other questions we can ask ourselves to decide if our work is sustainable. So first, what problem or need does your work address? What product do you have? What services do you give to your clients? Right? What customers, what need are you addressing? What problem are you solving of theirs? Then second, who is your work affecting? Who are your clients? Who are your customers? Who's your community? What's their culture? What's their language? What's their political identity? Where do they live? These are all things that make us who we are. These are all ways that we view the world. If you don't know who your clients are, who your customers are, if you don't know these things about them, how do you actually know what their need is? How do you know what their problem is? And then how do you know if you're having a positive impact? Right? Again, we're all working to make this positive impact. This is the reasons why we're working. But if you don't know your clients, you don't know the problem, then you don't know if you're doing this. And then finally, can your work be maintained? If you walk away and everything crumbles down, your work isn't sustainable, and you're not having that positive impact you wanted to have in the first place. So let's say you're an HR consultant, and the reason why you work is that you want to improve companies. You want to make the work culture better. And you've been hired by company X to make this policy, the HR manual, for this company. And so you're really good at this, this is your skill, you know what you're doing, you put the manual together, you put it in a book, and you pass it off to the director but you never asked a single employee what they wanted, what they saw the needs were, what they wanted out of their HR policies. Right? You didn't understand their work culture. You never even asked the HR director if they wanted a book. Maybe they wanted training, maybe they wanted a video training. So no matter how badly and how well your intentions were to make a positive impact, you didn't do it because your work was not sustainable. So I want to talk more about this idea of working sustainably in the context of sustainable development. So this is mostly where my experience is, this is mostly where I do my work, is in this field of sustainable development. Now when we say this, we're talking mostly about NGOs, aid organizations, governments, people who are trying to make different cultures, different communities better, right, to help themselves, to increase the health, um, the health services, increase education, decrease poverty. This is what sustainable development is trying to do. And people who work in this field, any time you ask them why you work, they would almost always say, I work to do good. I work to make a positive impact. But I want to use these examples to show you what happens when work is not sustainable. That no matter how good your intentions are, no matter how badly you want to make that positive impact, if your work is not sustainable, you're not going to do it. And not only will you not do it, but you'll actually harm people in the process. So I want to share with you my experience when I realized that even though my intentions, my intentions were so good, I wanted to work, I wanted to do good work so badly, but because my work was not sustainable, I actually harmed people in the process. So I was 22, and I just graduated college. And during my time in college, I was able to travel to East Africa, Southeast Asia, Central America, and I really fell in love with East Africa. All I wanted to do was be back in East Africa. So I met this woman who was running for parliament. Long story short, I ended up packing up my bags and moving to Kenya to help women run for parliament in Kenya. And I went there because I wanted 
to work. And I wanted to work to do good to affect people's lives. And I knew that I could do it because I had a political science degree, I had enthusiasm, and I knew that I wanted to do this. So this is all I need, right? Clearly I'm going to do good because I have all this, I have all these skills. So I'm there and for six months I'm doing um, voting training, civic engagement, I'm talking with constituents, I'm working with women who are running their campaigns. And six months goes by and we had this meeting to bring all these women politicians together. And they start talking about their challenges. They're having death threats. Their children's lives are threatened. They're being harassed. They're terrified to go home at night because they think they'll be kidnapped. These are real issues that women face all around the world who are trying to engage in their political process. And I sat there and I realized I can do nothing for them. Why am I even in this room with them? I have no skills, I have no know-how, I have no idea how to help these women. And while I thought I was working so hard to help them, in fact, I was actually harming them. I was putting them in danger by asking to go with them when they go out and they meet their constituents. And so I realized that I actually wasn't working for the community. I wasn't working for these people that I cared about. I was really working for myself. Not sustainable at all. So then I started to look around. I said, well, hopefully I'm not the only person who's ever done this. Maybe somebody else hadn't thought through this. Maybe there's more unsustainable work happening. And as it turns out, there are thousands of organizations in Kenya and all around the world who have the best of intentions, who want to do good work. But because their practices are unsustainable, they're actually harming these communities. So I'll use an example. I won't name any organizational names, but there is a trend with different American nonprofits to take 16-year-old youth and put them in a country completely other, right? Totally different, to take them outside their comfort zone so they can experience what life is like outside the US. Great idea. I think that's a wonderful idea. But then what they do is they say, okay, now that you're here, you need to do good. You need to make a positive impact. So the leaders of this organization will go into a rural Kenyan village and they'll say, okay, how can we help out these people? What can we do? And they'll look around and they'll say, okay, well, there's no education. We should give these people education. And they say, why? Why is there no education? They look around again. There's no school. Oh, there's no school building. Of course, if you have no school building, how can you have education? Now, mind you, they never asked a single person who lived in that community what they needed. They never asked them for their ideas, what their needs were, how they wanted to help themselves. So they go back to Nairobi and they pick up the 16-year-olds, they put them in Matatu, Matatu is a word for bus, and they drive them down the red dirt roads of Kenya into this rural village. And they bring out these tools and resources, right, to build this building. And they train the 16-year-olds on how to use those tools to build this school building. So a week goes by and the 16-year-olds are riding back down to the crowded streets in Nairobi in that Matatu, and they're ecstatic. They built a school building, they got a picture next to the school building to put on Facebook, they're so ex they, use, they learn how to use a hammer, right, this is awesome. And they're thinking to themselves, thank God I was there. Because if it wasn't for me, those poor Kenyans would never have a school building. They would never have education. I'm so glad I learned how to use that hammer to build that building. And the Kenyans are watching the Matatu drive off, and they're looking around. They're going, what the hell just happened? The Mazungos, which is a nice word for white person, the Mazungos came in, and they built this building, and they left. But where are the books? Where's the teacher? Right, do they even ask the Kenyan government if we can have a school? There are hundreds of reasons why communities do not have education, and it, almost, it is almost never because of a building. There are hundreds of these buildings, right? Buildings built for a purpose, because they're going to give education, but they're abandoned, because the community was never asked what they needed. This is more of a school, right, than that building is. And not only was that organization not doing good, they were actually harming this community. They were harming those 16-year-olds. Because now those 16-year-olds think that these Kenyans couldn't have built their own building. They didn't know how to do that. They didn't know how to bring education. I had to be there to do that. And these Kenyans are thinking these Americans, these Mzungus, they just come in. They don't care what we think. They don't care about us. They just want to do something, pat themselves on the back, and then leave. 
It's harming both of these people involved. It's breaking down what could have been a really strong relationship, right? We need to start to build these reciprocal relationships across cultures, across communities, if we want to make a strong global community. So let's switch this example around. This is a picture with me with the Maasai tribe in Kenya. Now, the Maasai tribe, they live in East Africa, and their whole life revolves around cattle. They herd cattle, they drink cow's blood for nutrition, they even make their homes out of cow dung. So let's say the Maasai were dropped down the middle of Tempe. They would probably look around and say, oh my god, these people are so poor. These poor people don't have any cattle. Right, what do they drink? What do they make their homes out of? The stock goes terrible, right? We have to help them. And so what they would do, because they're very well-meaning and very well-intentioned people, they would pick up a jackhammer and they would start to break up the pavement so that we can have a place to raise cattle. Now, I know it seems kind of crazy and strange, but there's not much of a difference between these Maasai coming to Tempe not asking us why maybe we prefer stucco to cow dung to make our homes, then the 16-year-olds in these organizations thinking that if they built a building, education will magically appear. Right? These are not sustainable examples. These are not examples of sustainable work. These organizations, those Maasai, weren't doing good at all, even though they were well-intentioned. So after my experience in Kenya, I sat down and I said, okay, so I still want to work, right? And I still want to work to do good. That's why I want to work. But I totally struck out the first time. So what can I do now? What can my career be now where I can actually help people in a sustainable way? So I thought about my skill set. Still have that political science degree. I'm now 24. I still have my enthusiasm. I've been able to travel around the world and meet different people and experience different cultures. I've had this moment of enlightenment where I think now I better understand what sustainable development is. And finally, I know American youth. I know my own culture. So I stumbled upon this organization, New Global Citizens. And at New Global Citizens, what we do is that we take and we educate those same 16-year-old students, but we educate them about the complexities of global issues. And then we give them the tools and resources to partner with different communities, grassroots organizations, who understand their problems and their needs, and they have the solutions. So we train students to raise money, to educate their community, to advocate on behalf of these organizations. And instead of supporting the American organization that goes into communities and build buildings and then leaves, they support Kenyan organizations, Kenyan people who understand their, com their community, they understand the complexity of the Kenyan education system. They understand what it takes to educate a child. And they're not going to leave because it's their community. They're invested in that community. So what we're doing is we're creating this reciprocal relationship between American youth and these different communities, different entrepreneurs around the world. But really what we're doing is that we're teaching students to find their passion. Maybe it's environmental issues or ending poverty or doing work in Africa. Right? We're teaching them to find that passion, to understand why maybe they want to work. And then we're giving them the resources to do it in a sustainable way. We're giving them the tools and education that can continue to make a difference, and they can do it by partnering with different grassroots organizations, by people on the ground. So when you think about why you work, again, I think we're all working because we want to make this positive impact in the world. But it's not enough to think and to know that's why you work. But you have to think about how you're doing it. Because if you're not doing it in a sustainable way, you're not achieving that goal. Does what you do, does your work, does it solve a problem or does it meet a need? Does it make a positive impact? Don't be the organization that builds a school building and then walks away and pats themselves on the back. That's not good work and it's not sustainable. Make sure you're having a positive impact. Listen to your customers, to your clients, to the community. Make sure you're having a positive impact. And then make sure it can be maintained. Make sure you're training your employees, your community. Build up leadership in whatever you're doing so people can continue to take it further. And if you're in a nonprofit, you should be working yourself out of a job. Right? That should be the goal every day, to work yourself out of a job. 
So when you get up each morning and you think, why am I working? Why am I going to work? Also think about how you're doing it and how you're going to achieve the purpose for why you're working in the first place. I challenge you to work sustainably every day. Thank you. Thank you.